How do you find the number of clusters in the k-means clustering algorithm? Let's see. First, let's recapitulate the k-means clustering algorithm. What is the k-means clustering algorithm? So, it is very simple. It comprises of two steps before which you first initialize a set of cluster centers and then assign each point to the closest cluster center and compute a new cluster center as a centroid of each cluster. You keep repeating this until you get nice clusters. So let's just see this in action. So suppose these are the set of points you have. First you initialize cluster centers by maybe you can pick points from the existing data set. Let's say k equals 3. You pick three cluster centers to begin with and then assign each point to the closest cluster center. This induces one clustering. Right? And you can see that with the circles. Each point is assigned to that particular circle which is closest to that cluster center. Now compute new cluster centers as the centroids of the existing clusters. So these are the new cluster centers now. Now once again assign each point to the closest cluster center and we already have better clusters after two iterations here. So this is the k-means algorithm. But how do you decide the number of clusters or how do you decide k? How do you find the number of clusters in the k-means algorithm? Let's see. We will look at two methods today. The first is the elbow and the second is the silhouette, which are the most popular methods used. There are many others. The elbow method. So the elbow method involves computing a metric which tells you how good the clustering is in some sense and plotting this value for different values of k so initially you will see that this metric is rapidly changing but then after some time you see that the value of this metric is not rapidly changing anymore. So when this point of change occurs where it is not rapidly changing anymore that's the elbow point the point in red that you see here which is k equals 3 for instance. So if you have your elbow here the point where the change is not rapid anymore that's the point you want. So what metric is used though that is plotted here? So there are many metrics that can be used. One is the average within cluster sum of squares. So what is this metric? The average within cluster sum of squares is just the distance of every point from its corresponding cluster center after clustering uh, and the average of this distance, right? So it is just distance of each point from its corresponding centroid. And as you see, a smaller value is better because a smaller value indicates that the clusters are cohesive where points are closer to their centroid in general. Another metric could be percentage of variance explained. So this metric can be computed as follows. So total within cluster sum of squares, which we saw earlier already. So uh, this is telling us how cohesive uh, clusters are. And total sum of squares, which is telling us in some sense the variance in the entire data set to begin with. And this is not dependent on clustering usually. So the percentage of variance explained is the total sum of squares, which is the sum of squares of distances between all points to all points minus total within cluster sum of squares divided by total within cluster sum of squares. So once again we see that this total within cluster sum of squares is subtracted from total sum of squares so the trend is reversed here where a higher value means better clustering. So what we see here is once again initially there is a rapid change in the metric but where that metric does not change rapidly is the elbow point that we want. In this case it is 10. And you might end up getting different values of k when you use different metrics here in the elbow method. So this is the elbow method. Another popular method is the silhouette method. So the silhouette method uh, is as follows. For every point you compute a silhouette score. How do you compute the silhouette score? So you compute two quantities. One is the mean intra-cluster distance which is A here and the mean nearest cluster distance which is B here. So let me quickly show you what these mean. So if, you, if these are the points you have, the mean intra-cluster distance is the if for a particular point. Let's say you're computing the silhouette score for this point here in the center. 
the mean intracluster distance is the mean of the distance of every point in this cluster to this point. The mean nearest cluster distance is as follows. So you take the cluster that is closest to this point other than the current cluster it is in. So it is this cluster. This is let's say farther away and this is nearer. So we take this cluster which is the nearest cluster to this point other than its own and take the average value of its distance from every point in this nearest cluster. So this is the mean nearest cluster distance. Once we have these two values, the silhouette coefficient is nothing but b minus a divided by max a comma b. So here a is telling us how cohesive the clusters are. We want clusters that are cohesive, mean intracluster distance is small. b is mean nearest cluster distance. We want this to be large, which means the clusters are spread out. The clusters are far from each other. So we want b minus a to be large. We want b to be large and a to be small. So b minus a should be large. So if we actually plot the silhouette coefficient of the entire data set, so we take silhouette coefficient for each point and take the mean value. So this is computationally intensive as well. We get the silhouette coefficient for the entire data set after clustering. And if we plot it, we see that it is highest for n or k equals three here. And this metric also takes care of overfitting in some form because if we keep increasing the values of k, the clusters become smaller and smaller and closer together sometimes. If we have a big cluster that we subgroup into smaller clusters, we will see that the mean nearest cluster distance is actually decreasing because each point is closer to other clusters as well. So it takes care of overfitting to some extent, right? So again, what we want here is the point that is maximum uh, and in a lot of cases, this works well. So another point to note is that this particular method, the silhouette score is easily available in the scikit-learn. So you can see it right here in sklearn metrics. You can check this out. So we looked at two techniques to find the value of k in k-means clustering. And both of these are heuristic in nature in some sense. One is the elbow criterion and the other is the silhouette score. Now, uh, I just want to add at this point that there are many algorithms where you do not have this challenge of finding the right value of number of clusters. For instance, there's DB scan and there is hierarchical clustering and so on. And these algorithms work in a lot of different use cases where KV does not work as well. But we will look at these algorithms in a different video. Thank you.